Hey, second graders, it's Mrs. Seals back for our next science lab. So we've been talking about different ways we can describe objects. The past couple weeks, we've been talking about ways we can change objects. Today, we're going to be talking about how um, we can combine objects and that when we combine them, they can do things together that they would not be able to do alone. All right, so um, an example of this is bridges. Bridges are made up of lots of different materials that all work together to, um, you know, do the job of the bridge and hold up cars or hold up people or hold up trains. So let us go get started. We're going to learn a little bit about bridges and then we are going to test out some bridges. So this is called combining materials and there's your target. I can combine materials that when put together can do things that they cannot do by themselves such as building a tower or a bridge and justify the selection of those materials based on their physical properties. All right, so we're talking about bridges. This says, why do we have bridges? Bridges are a way Bridges are built as a way to cross over things. Sometimes they're built over a body of water, like a river or a lake, or even sometimes parts of the, the Gulf. Um, like if you go down to the Gulf of Mexico in uh, Corpus Christi, you, there's a really big bridge. Sometimes they cross over roads. Sometimes they go over valleys or canyons. Bridge designs. Bridges have, have different designs depending on how they will be used. For example, is it going to be a train going over it? Is it going to be a car? Is it like the bridge right out here in front of our school that is just meant for, you know, pedestrians or people to walk over? Because then obviously it wouldn't need to be as um, strong and sturdy as one that would be carrying a train, right? You also have to, um, the design also depends on where the bridge will be built. Is it in the mountains? Is it um, in the desert? Is it over the water? Uh, the type of materials used to build the bridge, like rocks or bricks or stone or metal, things like that. And the amount of money available to use it. Also wood can be used for bridges. This says the first bridges probably were not built at all, but happened when a log fell across a river or stones tumbled into a river in just the right way to form a bridge. When people did build bridges, they used the materials that were readily available in their environment. If you lived in a place with lots of stones, then you would build with stones. If you lived in a place with lots of tall trees, you would use wood you know, from the tree to build your bridge. Here are some different types of bridges. Suspension bridge, this is a really famous a suspension bridge that's in the United States in San Francisco, California. You may have seen it um, on the, if you watch Full House or Fuller House, it's at the beginning of that. There's a beam bridge, there's an arch bridge, there's a truss bridge, and a cantilever bridge. Here are some famous bridges. It says in the United States, but not all of these are in the United States. I didn't make, the, this is the one PowerPoint I did not make. I took, uh, somebody else made this. Um, the Natchez Trace Bridge, this is in Louisiana. The Corpus Christi Harbor Bridge, um, which is in Corpus Christi. That's what I was talking about. That's in the water, it goes over the water. Um, the London Bridge right here is in London, England and the Golden Gate Bridge, which is the one I just told you about, that really famous suspension bridge in um, San Francisco. So here are some things that need to be thought about when you are if you are designing and building a bridge. You have to have a well thought out plan so they don't just go out there and start building. They have it drawn on pa paper and measured and everything planned out first. They have to know the purpose for the bridge, so again, is it gonna be for trains, for people, for cars? They have to know their limits. In other words, how big does it have to be? What does it have to be able to do? They have to know their materials. Again, are they using bricks? Are they using wood? Are they using rocks? Things like that. They have to know how much money they will um, be able to use for the bridge. And they have to be able to work cooperatively with their team. So, uh, today, what we are going to do is we're going to test out two different types of bridges and see 
which one is the strongest. So we're going to be, um, we are going to be testing out A. Oh, so I, I forgot my words. A beam bridge and an arch bridge. So actually, I know I just stopped sharing, but I actually want to go back to this um, PowerPoint so I can tell you, whoops, make sure we know the difference between the two. So this one is an example of an arch bridge. Oh, goodness. This is an arch bridge because this right here, the shape is called an arch. And this is a beam bridge because these things holding it up are called beams. Okay, so we're going to be building out an arch bridge and we're going to be seeing how many pennies our arch bridge can hold. And we're going to be building a beam bridge and seeing how many beams our or how many pennies our beam bridge can hold. Yikes, y'all. It's been a long day. I'm exhausted. I keep messing up my words. Um, all right, so here's how we're going to do this. To build our bridge, I am going to use these two stacks of books. These are, these are gonna be the ends of our bridges, okay? We're gonna start with the arch bridge. We're gonna see how many pennies our arch bridge can hold. And I'm gonna make these books about seven and a half inches across. The, the um, this, if parents, if you're doing this at home with your student, if this is something you want to do, um, the height of your books is going to determine how far apart they need to be for this activity. And I'll explain that in a minute. So the, the height of this book, books, the height of these books means they need to be about seven and a half inches apart. So I'm going to use my ruler. Make sure they're nice and straight and looks good. So what I mean by this, we're going to start with the arch bridge. So um, you're going to have two index cards taped together and this is going to be your arch. So when you determine how hot, how far apart they need to be, you want this arch to be, oh, see, I think I need to even scoot them out a little bit more. Not too much, hold on. Yeah, let's do about eight inches, okay? You want um, this to be pretty flat across. You don't want your, your arch sticking way up over the tops of the books, okay? So there's my arch, and then I'm gonna use two more index cards taped together on top here. So here's my arch bridge. I'm going to use some pennies, these are my weights, and I'm, we're gonna see how much weight or how many pennies our arch bridge can hold. So I'm gonna add one penny at a time to my bridge. There's one, and I'm gonna put them right in the middle. I'm not gonna put them over here because I want my arch to be supporting the bridge. There's two, I'm being very gentle. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ooh, I saw it go down a little bit, 10, 11, yikes, 12, <gasps> it doesn't, it's not looking good, is it? 13, oh, it, so it didn't hold 13 because it fell when I added 13. So my arch bridge held 12 pennies. That's how much weight it could hold, okay? So that was my arch bridge. My arch bridge held 12 pennies. Now we're going to make a beam bridge, which is super simple, and see how many the beam bridge will hold. So to make the beam bridge, I'm just gonna use one set of the index cards taped together, and I'm just going to Oh, yikes. Maybe I need to move my books a little closer together. Just place them across. They won't even hold up without any weight. Place them across my books. 
There we go. There's my beam bridge. So it's like the book, the stacks of books are my beams and, and there's the bridge. Okay. So before we see how many weight, how much weight the beam bridge will hold, I want to, I want to ask you, I want you to make a prediction. Do you think that, so our arch bridge held 12. Do you think the beam bridge is going to hold more than the arch bridge? or less than the arch bridge. So do you think it's gonna hold more than 12 pennies or less than 12 pennies? Make your prediction. All right, I'm gonna add them one at a time, ready? One, it's already not looking great. Two, <laughs> three, so it fell when I added three, so it didn't hold three, it held two, it successfully held two. So my arch bridge, arch bridge held 12 pennies, my beam bridge held two. Here's why. My arch bridge has extra support. I had an extra set of index cards underneath helping to hold the bridge up. So when, when this part, when the top part of my bridge started to collapse, I think it was maybe around like seven or eight. It had extra support underneath to help hold up the pennies. That's why my arch bridge was able to hold more than my beam bridge. Okay, so that showed you how when we combine materials, they can do things together that they would not be able to do alone. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this at home if you would like to. Um, none of this is dangerous. Students, I would still make sure I have my parents' permission to make sure I'm not using anything, um, you know, any books or anything that they don't want me to use. Uh, make sure you have their permission and supervision. You could do what I did. You could use books as the ends of your bridges. You could tape some index cards together. You could use pennies as your weights. You could also use paper clips as your weights. Um, you could also use uh, beads, rice, beans, whatever you have at home. It doesn't have to be pennies. I just use those because I have a lot of them um, and test them out. Or what you could do is you could uh, do a building challenge and you could build your own bridge. So you could um, use some different materials that you have around the house, maybe popsicle sticks, maybe straws, um, maybe aluminum foil, different things, whatever you have and see um, if you could build a bridge or maybe some different styles of bridges and see if they, um, which one can hold the most weight. If this is something that you do and you enjoy and you would like to take a picture and send it to me, uh, my email address is amanda.alter, I'm sorry, amanda.seals at uh, kalinaisc.org. And um, I would love to see any bridges that you make or anything that you find out while you're doing this experiment. Um, and I hope that you guys had a good time and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.